Hey guys, welcome to a very special podcast slash video because today we've got Andre, myself, and a very special reviewer. Blaze. Yeah, we'll see how good of a dog truck he is. And Andre, <laughs> we've got some really <laughs> cool trucks here. We did logistical jujitsu <laughs> and actually managed to get together almost every, almost every mid-sized truck. Yeah, so we do have the Nissan Frontier, the brand new one, hard body edition. We have the Honda Ridgeline. We have a Chevy Colorado, which is the same thing as a GMC Canyon, basically underneath. And we have a Toyota Tacoma and the all new Ranger. Now, for those of you who are listening to this as a podcast, we're gonna do a walk around. Uh, we're gonna show you what's on the outside, what's on the inside. We're gonna show you under the hood for every truck. We're gonna see how two big guys fit and maybe even a dog, but what truck is missing? Uh, well, we don't have a Jeep Gladiator. Yeah. Uh, we're doing a whole series of videos for mid-sized trucks actually right now. We called some of them Truck Madness, TFL Truck Madness, because we did drag racing, and you'll be able to see it at alltfl.com. And then we have a special contestant, which is the yellow truck. Why do we bring this old yellow truck on? <laughs> well, Ram and Stellantis currently does not offer a mid-size or a small truck in the United States. And we brought a Dodge Dakota in 1999, but it's a very special one with a giant V8. It's got the Magnum V8. Yes. Uh, and so what we'll do also is we'll start all the trucks up and you can listen to them because some of them have V6s and some of them are four cylinder turbos. And then one of them is a V8 and you'll be able to tell the difference in sound when we actually go through all of them. So we're planning on spending about, what, about 10 minutes per truck? Yeah. And uh, let's get right into it because this is not just any frontier, is it? No, this is special. And also, if you're listening or watching this, uh, most of these trucks, not the Dakota, but most of the new ones cost about the same. Yeah. So this is a very special video because you'll find out for the same amount of money, which mid-sizer do you want to buy or which one appeals to you, right? Yeah, so what's the amount of money they all cost? About? About 45000 Yeah, and they're all the off-road versions too. Yes. Except for, of course, for the Dakota. <laughs> the Dakota is a two-wheel drive, two-door, short box. Anyway, yeah. we'll, we'll get to that later. It looks like our third of you took a, took a break over there. He's sitting in the snow. Wait, what? Yeah, I know. Please, what are you doing, dude? Look, I thought he was going to review our trucks. I thought he was going to try to get in the truck. Okay. Well, what? he's too warm. Yeah, that's what you get when you get a okay. Chinese mountain dog in the summer. All right, so what, what makes this Nissan Frontier special besides the fact that it's way cool? Uh, it's nostalgia. Yeah. So retro. Th this is retro. Um, so this is a hard body edition of the new Frontier. This is a 2024 model. Uh, uh, basically, this truck is an SV, which is kind of their mid grade, right? So it's, it's in, on pricing. Hey, podcast listeners and TFL Talk viewers, I wanted to take a minute to talk to you about a quick and simple way to sell your car or truck with the help of our new partner, High Road. With High Road's online portal, you enter your vehicle's VIN number or plate, mileage, and zip code, and you'll get competing offers from several qualified dealers in your area within seconds. You pick the best deal offered and follow through with the dealer to sell your vehicle. No more managing scammy emails from buyers on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. No more time wasted on no-show buyers. No bait and switch with a, will you take a check excuse from sketchy buyers. Now keep in mind, these offers will be for trade-in values of your vehicle. If you wanna go through the hassle of getting more for your vehicle, that's up to you. But if you wanna sell your vehicle hassle-free and fast, go to tfltruck.com and click sell your truck in the navigation menu. Or click on the High Road ad at the bottom of the website if you're on mobile, or click on the column if you're on a desktop. High Road makes it easy, and we like easy. With the hard body package, you get these incredibly awesome, almost monoblock wheels. Which Nissan used to do back in the day. They had yeah. them on Frontiers, they had them on Pathfinders. Yep. Yeah, and so if you're a fan of old Nissan uh, styling, you're gonna love uh, the wheels. I'm really impressed that Nissan brought those back. Yeah. And you know, once a cool wheel, always a cool wheel. I'm gonna say those are the best looking wheels out of any of the trucks here. I think so, and people actually notice it on the street, on the highway, when you're driving this truck, they notice it's not cheap. This whole package includes several things. It includes uh, special fender flares. It in includes a blacked out front end. I love the no chrome. Yeah, no chrome, but also some of the older trucks had no chrome as well. So this is kind of a retro theme. It's had graphics on the hood, blacked out mirrors, 
Um, and also this has a kind of an off-road package as well. So it does have this, it's not a really like a true, true rock slider, but it's a rocker protector panel that can take some big hits. And also we have this Frontier Sports Bar, this kind of bed mounted rack here in the back. Now, I love the stickers. It's obvious it's a four by four because it says so on the side. Do you know the exact price or do we have the Moroni in the truck? Uh, get I, I, I do. I don't know why, uh -huh. but um, this Nissan costs exactly the same as the Ranger will show you. At exactly, the end. to the penny. To the penny, $46,540. And that sounds like a lot of money, Roman. It does. Right, it is a lot of money. It is a lot of money, but keep in mind the average new car price now is about 47,000. Uh, so you're kind of right where the average new car price is. Now I know that's not an excuse for a $47,000 mid-sized truck, but dude, back in 2019, this would have been a lot cheaper. You know, the world has changed. Yeah, and they introduced this new generation of the Frontier really as a 22 model right so it's been almost three years that this model has been on sale and it has everything it has a um, rack here for your your rail for your tie downs cleats it's got a 400 watt outlet in the bed for charging things how big's the bed uh this is a five footer a basically all these trucks have very similar configurations they're crew cabs basically five foot beds gotcha yeah so you know obviously they're five, well, four really, categories of trucks. So there's a new compact truck category, which is like the Santa Cruz and the Maverick. Then we get into midsize trucks. I don't know why they're called midsize, but they're the small trucks that yeah. people are used to. Uh, and then of course you get full-size trucks like the F-150, the Silverado, and then we'll get into the heavy duty trucks. So on, this, is on, this is on the small side, but they're not so small anymore as you'll see when we compare it to the old Dakota. Yeah, exactly. And actually, this 4x4 Frontier, see, I'm, I'm up just about 6'3". I can reach over the bed easily. I can grab, you know, reach into the floor of the bed. Um, this sports bar I probably wouldn't get because it kind of limits my access to the bed. And I'm not a huge fan, I guess, of the sports bar in general. I, I just, I mean, it depends. Do you want to buy your truck because of the way it looks or because of the way it functions. Yeah. And you know, that's up to you. How about towing? How does this guy to do for towing? So uh, it's about 65-ish, about 6,500 pounds for towing. We also have an iGauntlet uh, test, the world's toughest towing test that we're gonna publish very soon. Um, but it's pretty good. The only complaint I had here, Roman, is the hitch is kind of hidden underneath. So it's hard to get your chains on? Yeah, it's a little bit difficult. You have to kind of lean down and actually get your chain, trailer chains put on and your hitch put on. But other than that, it's a pretty solid, hardworking truck. Well, the other thing that makes it uh, old school, of course, is what's under the hood. So I'm gonna pop it. And uh, if you guys are fans of Nissan, you'll know what's under the hood because it's been around a while. Yep, uh, they introduced this engine, I believe in 2021. This is their new, uh, for them, a new design of the 3.8 liter V6. So there are no turbochargers here, just straight up V6. And it's very powerful. Yeah, what's the horsepower and torque? Um, 310 horsepower. Oh, the, the fuse box has gone off. It's beeping, okay. Um, 310 horsepower and 281 pound feet of torque. That's a lot. The, the horsepower is class leading basically and a nine speed automatic. Yeah, so that's, you know, that's modern transmission. Uh, but as you know, the industry, what? Yeah, look at that beeping, it's crazy. I don't huh? think it likes us opening the hood. Yeah, it's like, hey, like, close me. Okay, that's crazy. Let's, let's close it. Um, so as you know, Ford maybe could, credited, could be credited with starting this trend, but trucks are going to turbocharge, yeah. uh, if not electric. Uh, and so what we're getting is smaller displacement, multiple turbos, uh, more power, a lot more torque. A lot more torque, but not necessarily more fuel economy. No, because, well, we'll get to that yeah, soon. Exactly because not. when you step into that turbocharger, right, when you're accelerating hard, you're using a lot of fuel to do so. Yeah, it's like, you know, Ford, you can have eco or boost. <laughs> but not both. <laughs> no, not both. <laughs> I'm beeping again. Dang you, truck. All right, let's get inside. Okay. I'll get to the back seat. So one of the things we want to go over here, since we have all of them lined up, is just how comfortable is the back seat. So we're both tall. You're an inch taller than me. I'm 6'2", okay. you're 6'3". You sit okay. where, kind of, don't sit where you're comfortable, because I will never get in the back here. But <laughs> but you sit kind of how you could drive no. if you had a rear seat passenger. No, it should be all good. All right. Let me, let me 
Oh, it's electric. Oh, I'm on my side. Yeah, it's it's powered. Oh God, Andre, this is not good. What? I don't, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read Can all I... these trucks. All right, no, that, that's not the problem. You're not the problem. What? What's wrong? So I'm gonna rate it from a one being a legless human <laughs> to okay. ten being a long wheelbase Range Rover. All right. <laughs> So that's the that's the scale. Okay. I'm gonna give this I'm gonna give this well, a two, dude. Uh, it's I, I have leg room, but this bench is straight up. I mean, it is straight up. How's your headroom? Back uh, headroom there? is not good. I'm, I'm hitting you know my hair, uh, and I feel like it's very claustrophobic. I don't even have the thing closed, but I would not want to go more than out to lunch in the back of this. And the major problem is the seats are, you know, pretty soft, but this back bench is straight up. I, I remember when I was living in Europe, we went to um, a Catholic Austrian mass and they uh, had uh, wooden benches in this church for okay. Christmas. Okay. Uh, and that was old school. <laughs> that was old school Catholicism. You got to love God to sit through that <laughs> because it was so, so uncomfortable. Not quite that bad, but not good. Well, but it's better up here. I do. So I think mostly in the midsize category, Maybe, you know, kids are usually in the back, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, um, Don't make excuses for them. Come on. No, but that's a small category of okay. track. All right, all right, all right. Let, let's, let's, put that, okay. let's put that to the test. Would okay. your kids sit back here? I have tall kids. Well, <laughs> people have tall kids, Andre. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so oh. there's also USB and USC back here and another power outlet. But what about uh, air vents? Do you have air vents? I have no air vents. Okay. I do have grab handles, too, which is nice. So I have one. So, I have one behind your head and one up here. All right, how about the front? Talk the about front. That. The front seat is quite comfortable. The, this bottom cushion is very long. I do have longish legs, and I feel pretty good. It's powered, adjustable. The steering wheel is nice and soft and leather wrapped. There is one issue. I have kind of a tilting function, but no telescoping function on the steering wheel, which could be a small issue for some people. And I do have four wheel drive, like you said, four high, four low, but no full time all wheel drive. And so no, the, no rear locker. And no rear locker because it's not a Pro 4X. Which is kind of a big miss for a truck that looks like it should be racing across the desert. Yeah, but you could do that. You could get a Pro 4X hard body, but this is not it. All right, and then I love the fact that you have regular uh, knobs and buttons for most of the controls. I'm, I'm going to give it a huge plus for having a tuning and volume knob and for having dual climate zones. We also have heated seats, which is nice. Yep. Is there a heated steering wheel? Yep, it's right here. A heated steering wheel? Yep. Dang, dude. Uh, uh, but the thing with Nissan, sometimes they spread the buttons around. So there is a, there a lot of buttons on my left as behind, well. Behind the steering wheel in yeah. front of your left knee, yeah. Let's start it up just really quickly. Yeah, you start up. I'm going to go get the exhaust on, okay? Okay. So you do the rooms and then we'll move on to the next one and see how that does. All right. Let me Sounds get, good. Let me get out there. Open your window. I'll tell you when. Okay. All right, Andre, vroom it. Whoa. Yeah, so, not bad. So, Roman, yo, it, it lets me rev it almost all the way. That's cool. Yeah. And okay. also, the other thing, Fender audio system. So, really, really good uh, audio system as well. Yeah, I'm not sure. Just because it's got a brand name doesn't. No, no, but but trust me, I, I mean, like I'm not Fender? I'm not an audiophile, right. but I do enjoy this system and also the Titan Fender system. And if you guys want to know how they off-road, how they uh, tow, accelerate, how they accelerate, all those videos are coming on alltfl.com. This is very detailed walk around. So if you're shopping for a mid-size truck, we hope by the end of this video, or if you love mid-size trucks, you're going to get a sense for what each truck offers and what each truck doesn't offer. So time to move on to the Honda. Yes, so this is also new for this year. This is the Trail Sport, Trail Sport trim of the Ridgeline 2024. You could see the badge. So mainly, Roman, what this is, is really kind of a tire package because the all-wheel drive 4x4 system here in the Honda is really good. But there's a couple of issues with this uh, Well, truck. so let's start with that. First of all, this is the only truck that's full-time all-wheel drive. Yes. All the other trucks you have to select. Also, this is the only one that's not a fully body-on-frame construction. It's unibody. This, it's unibody with a little subframe right in the rear for the bed. So it's kind of unique in that way. Also, it's the widest truck here. So if you look, if you're watching this, if you look from the very front, 
you can kind of see how wide this truck is. And we'll sit in it, and you'll see the center console is a little bit wider. My, my only um, critique of the design, Andre, and I like it, I think it's handsome, especially like the color, is if you didn't know that was a, a Ridge Sport without the, seeing the bed, it could be a Passport, you know? Or a Pilot. Or a Pilot, yeah. They're all yeah. kind of the same. Uh, yeah. And well, maybe they, that's good. Maybe people like like brand identity. But yeah, it's it should be more... It's the unique. least trucky of, of all of the ones here, right? Yeah. It's the most car-like. And Honda does okay. I think they sell like, what, 30,000 like, units a year, give or take? Yeah, like 35 ish uh, 3,500 a month, yeah. maybe. So maybe approaching 40,000 of these a year. Um, Nissan, recently Nissan Frontier sales were down just a little bit, but they're usually above the Honda in sales. And uh, what are we getting else? What else are we getting with the Trail Sport package? So we got, we got the more aggressive tires. Yeah, so this tire is, if you can take a look here, this is the General Grabber AT, so all-terrain tire. But we don't have a lot of ground clearance, Roman. I mean, this tire is quite good. You can see a lot of mud kind of already here at our Tumbleweed Ranch. And a few years ago, we did a um, comparison with the, uh, with the uh, Ridgeline. Uh, when we took the four, at, the, at that time it was four trucks, I think. That was when this version came out, this right. generation. It, uh, wasn't it like 2017-ish? Yeah, and what we had to do was we had to leave this one behind because it quickly overheated the transmission. So right? it doesn't have that low range, right? Yeah. Sometimes when you're crawling off-road, um, you do need that gearing. But this does have the all-wheel drive system. We've said that many times. It's quite good for like snowy roads, well, it has modes. dirt roads. And it has some modes. So the modes are really good, but when you're seriously off-roading, what happens is it's trying to break the wheel that doesn't have traction to send power to the wheel that has traction. And we found out, and this is on other vehicles that don't have a low range as well. It's not just Honda. It's just, it's just like, eh, 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 and then you get a warning transmission overheats. And then we don't want to push it beyond that because, you know, bad things happen. So let's look at the bed because this is the most unique bed as well. Uh, along and with the, the most, most unique tailgate. tailgate. Yeah. So the tailgate, of course, does this. Oh, not dampened. No. No, but... Kinda... But it also does this. It opens like a door. Yeah, so before the uh, tailgate wars, Honda was way ahead. You gotta give them credit for that in coming up with unique and innovative ways to design a tailgate. The, the bed height, the, the floor of the bed is a little bit taller than some other pickups. Oh, here comes the other reviewer. Oh, Blaze, do you wanna get into the trunk? Blaze, you wanna try to get in? No, he said no. I thought maybe, maybe you came by and decided that you wanted to be part of this. So this is huge. Look how deep this is, Roman. Yeah. I mean, this Here, is. Let's, a... let's see if Blaze will jump in. Let's close this so we don't, we don't. He doesn't hurt himself. All right, Blaze. Blaze, come here. Come here. Come here, Blaze. You can jump in. Come on. Come here. Come here, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I could give him He's one. He's not that excited. Hold on. All right, I'll do it this way. Come on, Blaze. Treat. Go. Blaze. Treat. Oh, good oh boy. look at that. Good boy. <laughs> so, so Blaze is a uh, Burmese. How much does he weigh? 105 pounds. 105. So he's a big boy. Yeah. So being, um, you know, being in, I think the lowest truck here, he Blaise, was able to. I jump. don't have a treat. I'm so sorry. Oh, he loves you, Andre. <laughs> <laughs> he was able to jump in, and he's got dirty paws, but it doesn't matter because this is a composite floor. Yeah, composite bed. Also, the stereo, right, um, actually uses the 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 walls of the bed to actually. Pre uh, uh, generate music yeah, and, got, and like, sound. Thumper, they got thumpers in here. Yeah. And a little storage cubby. A little storage cubby here. Yeah, you can put treats in there. Psh, I didn't mean to say that, but sorry. <laughs> uh, there's other, one other thing. Let's pop open that cubby again. And we'll show most uh, trucks. I know, I know. <laughs> oh, no, no, please. Please, what you jumped all over oh, your shirt. Oh, no, your, no, your no. Sweater. I, I'm sorry, I promised you a treat and I don't have one. Sorry, dude. He's angry. Yeah, he, he's like, I'm going to get you dirty. So that's where the spare is. Underneath the floor of the bed. Which is uh, innovative, but if your bed is full of rocks or- Plywood. Or bicycles. Or you're you carrying a motorcycle, for example. You gotta get it out to get at the spare. Yeah, so that's not a huge plus. It's not a plus. No. Also, um, I forgot to mention this, Roman. In the Frontier, this hard body SV that we're looking at, um, had about 1,100 pounds of payload. Yep. But this truck should have a little bit more. Let, let's check it out. Yeah, go look. Let's see what the sticker says. Let's check out what the payload is. Yeah, this is proper. Look at that. 1,477 pounds. So that's now really usable payload. Yeah, so it tows the most, right? No. 
<laughs> it has really good payload, Roman, <laughs> but it only is rated to tow 5,000 pounds. So it tows the least. The least. Yeah, because it's body on frame. Yeah. All right, let's look under the hood. Now, if you're fans of Hondas, passports, pilots. Accords, if you like Accords, if you like V6s. You'll be familiar with this engine. You'll be very pleased. Oh, you gotta use it. I got it, I got her. Do you hold it? Yeah, Can you hold it? it? Yeah. What's a 3.5? So it's a 3.5 liter. Is the hood pretty heavy? It's heavy. Yeah. Um, 280 horsepower and what, about 262, I believe, pound-feet of torque. So it's not the torquiest engine, but it does have a nine-speed automatic. Yeah, just like uh, Let the, me close that. the Nissan, right? Yep. Um, and it could be, in the real world, one of the most efficient ones of the bunch because it's kind of low to the ground. It doesn't have very good ground clearance. It's just under eight inches of ground clearance. So I wish if they were to create a new generation of the Ridgeline, yeah. I hope they kind of make the front end a little bit more, you know, musculine truck-like and gave it more ground clearance, just yeah. lifted it up. Yeah, but we keep saying that, Andre. And maybe what they're thinking is like, why do we want to look like all these trucks when we can look like this truck? Well, maybe that's what, right? the, that's the Honda way. Yeah, it's, it, Honda's always going to, kind of, you know, march to its own drummer. Hey Cole, let me show you something here. Uh, open up that. It also does this, which is very unique. So what you can do is you can do that, and then you can do it on the other seat. So there's no storage under here, but you can actually but, like put a bicycle. But it's open floor. Yeah, it's open floor. Yeah. It makes a really great- so, so huge space. Yeah, once again, thoughtful engineering. So let me sit in the back of this guy and see how I feel. Oh yeah. All right. How do you feel? I feel like I have no knee room. Are you all the way uh, back? No. Okay. And I'm, I could move up just a little if bit. You can move up a little bit more or recline less. All right. So seat comfort, uh, I would say. Not as upright? Not as upright. Oh, I was hoping to get more light in here. Uh, not as upright, uh, more comfortable. Headroom is good. Seat comfort, cushion is good. I have air vents, which is very thoughtful. And then over here I have a power outlet. Uh, so this would be obviously a five, right? Uh, like in the middle. Like in the middle. Yeah. Which, and I'm, I'm, once again, the scale is to a long wheelbase Range Rover. So, so that would be a ten. Like so, like a like a very large right, comfortable vehicle. Right. So th this this is you know um, not horrible. I don't know if I'd want to cross country in the back seat, but if I were a little short of a human being, I think you would have a fine time doing it. How's the front? You know what? It's better than the Nissan. Yeah. So on your scale, if the Nissan was a seven out of ten, yeah. Gosh, this a is long, it's 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 three away from a long wheelbase Range Rover. No, you no, know. I mean softness. Look, the seat is. I'm comparing it to like the biggest, most roomy, most comfortable vehicle. No, no. I, I'm comparing it as a driver. Like if I was to drive, like you said, cross country, I would prefer this over the Nissan. In there. the front. That's in fair. the front. Yeah. So, we so could, this we, is quite good. So we got heated seats? Yeah, we, we have heated seats we have here. Heated steering wheel? Yes, it's up here. So every manufacturer usually puts their buttons in different places. And we got, do we have digital control, uh, dashboard or do we have uh, analog or both? Uh, both, a little bit of both. My tack is digital. Ooh, let me quiet down the AC. Yep. Uh, my speedometer is analog and my transmission is a push button. Yeah, I don't love that. So if you're not used to this, uh, I believe our camera guy Cole was driving this for a little while, and he it, it took him you know just the 30 to, seconds to. T wireless charging, which is nice. Yep. And then do you have paddle shifters? Yep. Wow, paddle shifters on a truck. And look the 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 width of the center console. Like I said, I feel like a full size truck in here. Yeah. This, let, me go, this, let me let me go back there. We'll do the room rooms. Yep. Sounds so good. Let, let me see. I'm locked in. Can you get out? No, I can't get out. The Is there a child lock? Yeah, I'm child locked in. <laughs> I was talking about oh, children. Can you, can you open up? No, I got you. Okay. I'm, yeah, now I'm child locked in. Thank you. Okay, I'll, I got it. All I got right, it switched. Right, go room it. Lazy, come here. All right, come here. Watch out. Don't room it yet, Andre. Don't room. Lazy sitting right behind. <laughs> don't room. Lazy sitting right behind it. It's got right, dual Blaise, exhaust go. pipes on hey, this call, one. Call Blazy, would you? Blaze. Say treat. Blaze, treat. Come here, come here, Blazy. Come here. The, the problems we have. Blaze, treat. Come hey, on. shoot him. Cole, go for it. <laughs> yes. All right. <laughs> go ahead, Andre. I can't, I can't hear you. I can't hear it. 
<laughs> it's impossible to hear. Oh gosh. But, but it does let me rev it quite high. What does it matter when you can't hear it? I don't think we have needed to move Blaze except for the fact that he was breathing exhaust. Okay, Blaze. Sorry, that's a twin twin outlet, dual dual pipes there. All right, now we come to a very personal review. Well, hold on, hold on. Before we switch over to Chevy. Yeah, you want to see something else? Um, this is also one of the more expensive ones. Okay. Uh, in the bunch. This is almost 47,000. So, I mean, that was 46.5. This is, as it says, it's basically almost 47. So the pricing is about the same once again. All right, and here we are uh, with the Chevy Colorado Trail Boss. Yes. Uh, which happens to be your personal truck, Andre, for those of you who are watching this and don't follow TFL. Yeah. Uh, and you bought this, well, it's about a year ago now, isn't it? Yeah, it was in April 2023, and now we're almost in April again. All right, I'm going to say, I'm just going to say it, it's the best looking truck here. Really? I said it about the Nissan, but now I'm changing my mind. I like are, are you just it. saying it because we're friends? No, or? I like, oh. no. I was standing next to Nissan, I like the retro look, but for a modern truck, I think this looks really good. I love the little turn signals that are that are in here. Uh, I love the fact that it's got wider fender flares where you can see those beefy uh, all-terrain tires that stick out. And actually, I think they're bigger than the Nissans. Um, they are a little bit bigger. Yeah, I just love the styling of this thing. There's a lot of interesting design language going on in the hood where you've got a lot of contouring. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's just a really good looking truck. It just looks very purposeful and very off-roady. Well, thank you, dude. And I, I picked a loud color. You did pick a loud color. Uh, nitro yellow. You were, you were brave, Andre. And it splits people down the middle. Some people really like it and some people really hate it. You so. know, I love the colors of all these trucks. If you go to a dealership, you're going to get three choices, black, <laughs> white, or silver. Yeah. And it's cool that we have blueberry over there next to uh, the Colorado. And I like that kind of cement color that the Ford has. And this kind of bluish, uh, yeah. Yeah, kind of pastel blue. And then, of course, I'm a big fan of red trucks and then the bumblebee over there, which we'll get to. All right, so uh, what do you think of this truck, Andre? Why don't you walk so, us through it? So this is technically a 23 model, right? For 2024, it's mostly the same. Um, and they, they kind of switched over to turbocharged engines. They modified the frame a little bit to make it a little bit longer wheelbase. Um, and it's, the wheelbase is about 131 inches versus Honda's 125. So it's got a longer stance but about the same bed length as the Honda. So let's take a look at the bed. I'm not really going to drop it, but if I did, it it's, would not be dampened. No, because this is a Trail Boss that's based kind of on a work truck, right? So it doesn't have a lot of fancy stuff. Well, we'll talk about what's well, inside. It's got the step. It does have a bumper step. Yeah, Chevy's kind of pioneered that, and a lot of the manufacturers have copied it. So I guess, it, you know how I said that Honda bed was high. This bed is also pretty high. Did you so, get Did you get a line from the factory? Or did you have no, to do it? No, I had to do it myself. I hate that. Like the nice thing about like the Honda is it comes just just composite. Same thing with the yeah. Toyota. Here you got bare metal and you got to go get it lined, and that's if you get it from the factory, it's about six hundred, and if you get it done locally at your local Linex or whoever you use, that's also six hundred, and it's yeah. a, you know it's a pain in the butt because they take the truck for the whole day. Um, but I wanted it first, remember? Um, we, we always try to be first. Yeah. And bedlining trucks at the factory, that usually means a delay. All right, how's the towing on this? Uh, amazing. Yeah. It's class leading. 7,700 pounds. Um, the hitch is relatively easy. Um, the, the, the chain hooks are a little bit hidden underneath, but the hitch is very visible. Um, and I've towed my boat, I don't know, dozens of times and it's been on the eye gauntlet and it's also a little bit taller than other colorados because it's an off-road truck it's also a trail bus does it have the biggest wheels and tire package here you think it's got the largest um tire of this bunch uh -huh. it's a 32 inch tall tire 32.1 all right now let's look under the hood so when you bought this chevy was doing something pretty daft uh, you could get it with three power levels if i remember right right <laughs> yes there's like a low output a medium and a high output yeah. and people were like come on guys just knock that off and they did so yeah you, you had to have your actual I, I did, software up i got a medium run right yeah. because i i didn't want to like spend all the money up front um and they also had the work truck version of it with lower numbers and for 2024 there's now two versions the low output and then the high output this is the high output because i got it tuned at the dealership did it make a difference could you tell <sighs> 
I, I'm spinning my tires once in a while, more than before. So I think torque made a difference, but the horsepower stayed the same. Which is? 310 horsepower, just like the Nissan, and 430 pound-feet of torque, which is, out of all these you see here, is a lot more than all the other trucks you see right here. Made it to a... It's an eight speed. Eight speed, okay. So we have a nine speed, nine speed. Now we're in the eight speed and there's no manual option. There's no two door short cab option. So they kind of simplified it for themselves. But if you wanted a two door simple truck, you're not going to find it. So this is what you get. Yeah, but there's another benefit to this is right. the price. Yeah, how much? Uh, I paid about 41,000. That was the sticker, 41K. And you paid a price for that, literally. Yeah, we'll see it okay, in the we'll inside. See it inside yeah. But when you consider 46, 47, 41, that's a big saving. That's like five grand saving. That is nothing to sneeze at, my friend. All right, let me sit in the back again. Do I have any mess back here? A little bit, we won't look at that. Okay. We'll hide the mess, Andre. This is, this is Andre's personal truck, so it is not a loader truck. So don't, um, don't be surprised. So if I, stuff I don't have here. a, I don't have a, um, like a shade. Um, I don't have power adjusting on my seat. All right, um, I'm gonna give it a smidge better than the Nissan. I forgot what I gave the Nissan. Was it a one or a two? One or two, yeah. Yeah, this, if that was a one, this is a two. Uh, very upright, not enough headroom, not enough knee room. Uh, once again, I uh, wouldn't want to be here for more than, you know, the time it takes to drive to lunch with your friends or coworkers. Uh, we do have vents back here, cup holders, uh, but really upright back seat, and for me, uh, not very comfortable. For your big kids, it must not be great. And also, you don't have any um, center armrest no. in this one because it's a little bit more of a simple model. And God help you if you have to sit in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to show you one more thing. Yeah. Um, hold on. I wanted to show under the seat because it's a stark difference. Well, we'll show after you. We'll okay. Show you. Yeah. Let's let's wrap it first. Yeah. No, let's show them the, the dashboard and the interior. Let's power this up. Yeah. So do you have heated seats? No the steering wheel. Nothing. Well, uh, I, there's some of your money, Andre. Uh, I don't have cruise control room. Yeah, that's also a problem. How do, you, how do you like it in terms of, you know, the layout? Uh, is it easy to operate all the controls? Uh, yeah, uh, I, I just I'm still not happy with the headlamp control. The headlamp control is digital, that's, right? It's uh, it's a touch screen. That is just silly, Andre. So so. We do a lot of filming here, yeah. right? We have to turn our lights off and on in different circumstances for filming. I have to either, you know, just hit the key on the accessory position and work through that. Well, That's the reason, not ideal. You know, they do it is, well, the designers and the manufacturer will say because of sleekness, right? It make it cleans up the look of the interior. Yeah. The reason we think they do it is because you get rid of more buttons and so you save money. So that that is certainly one way they should never save money and that is to getting getting any, any kind of functionality that prohibits you from driving the vehicle, right? It would yeah. be like, like Tesla putting the transmission controls on the screen. I don't think that's a good idea because if your no. screen goes out, you now have no lights. And also Tesla is getting rid of stocks for blinkers. And that, and that, that should happen, hasn't it? Yeah. We, we, you lost the screen for a while and you had no lights. Exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. all right. I'll so, uh, just one more thing. Yeah. I do have automatic, a choice of automatic full-time four by four. So I can actually select that, or I can have four low, four high. I have a couple of different driving modes, and I have a lot of payload. It's over 1,500 pounds of payload. You know, you know what I don't have back here? A AC? No, no, I have vents. I don't have USB or USB-C. Uh, I have no way to power my, my stuff. Really? Yeah, there's nothing. Yeah, that's not good, because, you know, rear passengers must charge in no, their nothing. tablets. No, I gotta get out of this, dude, it's too tight. It's, it's hot. It's hot and too tight. Right, let me let me, let me go do the room rooms and we'll show them the back seat. Okay. Underneath. All right. Hold on. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go back here. All right. Room room it, dude. Go for it. Okay. That's not bad. Better than the Honda. There's also a whistle of the turbo. It's quite pronounced. I could I could hear the whistle. Is the whistle of the turbo the new supercharger? Yep, the whistle. Here, I'll let you open this. I don't want to break anything. Oh no no. Um, so first of all, there's a latch on the on the side, but look how not much room there is. Look, check it out. 
Yeah, I mean, Honda by far is the best solution. If you compare this to the Honda, I mean, that floor was open, right? Yeah. And this is a body on frame truck, of course, and it kind of limits some of the space um, you have down here. So that's my, my complaint. All right, well, let's move on to the Taco. And for all of you guys, like I say, who aren't familiar with kind of our fleet, uh, the Nissan and the Honda belong to Nissan and Honda. This belongs to Andre. And of course, Blueberry, which we named our Tacoma, belongs to us. We bought this. You know, I, I was driving it today and I got a service coming soon. I need to service it soon. Well, but we only almost have like 6,000 miles on it or something? Five. 5,000? Well, yeah, in like a month and a half, we almost put on 5,000 miles. And we did have an issue with it. I think we should address that. We had our front diff uh, uh, blowout uh, when we were off-roading it. Uh, and according to Toyota, that was the ADD, which stands mm -hmm. for... Active Differential Disconnect. Which is a shaft uh, that broke, uh, and it's actually meant to break, so if there's too much torque, you don't explode your front differential. Or the drive shafts downstream. Or the drive shafts, right. or the half shafts. But... Uh, Toyota fixed it under warranty, yeah. uh, and now it's back, um, and that's all there is to it. <laughs> I don't know what... People are doing, like... Analysis of Videos it and, and saying that, you know, this is not true. You know, we took it to the dealer. They didn't show us. We have to go by what Toyota says. We have a good relationship with Toyota. We know the chief engineer. I don't think the children would lie to us. So I believe them. I think that's exactly what happened. It sounded like that's exactly what happened. But, but they're still investigating it, right? Yeah. They, they want to make sure that, you know, since the conditions we were in were not super, super extreme, that it never happens again in the, in the same situation. All right, I'm tired of that. Let's just talk about the truck now. <laughs> so it's a tier D off-road, right? Yeah. So once again, the same theme, right? Off-road model. Yeah, and uh, I like the styling, Andre. I think they did a good job of updating the uh, look of the Tacoma. Obviously, the Tacoma was around a long time. Toyota, unlike many other manufacturers, uh, don't necessarily update their cars every four years. In fact, this has been, what, 10 years now? Yeah, so, I mean, this is a brand new, all new 2024, right? And the previous one was about, what, 2015-ish? Yep. So that's almost eight, nine years. Yeah. Nine years of uh, model change. And I like, I like the look of, of the truck. I don't think it's as good looking, like I said, as the Colorado. Uh, we bought this in Texas and we drove it up. Uh, so we road tripped it immediately. And we can talk about that or you can watch the video. Um, one of the things that I really find uh, nice about the truck is the headlight design. It's very similar to a Tundra. So if you were to put this next to a Tundra, it would look like a baby Tundra. Yeah. You know, and you've got this kind of like almost boomerangy design in the headlight that the Tundra also shares. We, we do have the TRD wheels uh, and kind of these ATs that aren't ho horribly aggressive. Right. Uh, a little bit more, I mean, it, almost a compromise, but Sheldon told us during the event that, you know, they've tested this tire in many, many different environments. But it's a combination of things, right? My Colorado is actually not really good on fuel. Yeah. I'm averaging about 19 MPG, well, I which... Think, I think we're averaging what, about 22-ish. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, the tires are a huge part of that. Yeah. I selected really aggressive tires on my Chevy. Um, these tires are a little bit more efficient. They're a little bit smaller. Well, we've got, we've got these Predator steps that came with it. Uh, we, were, we were one of the first, or we wanted to be one of the first to get it, so we just took the one that had, you know, the least amount of stuff for kind of the least amount of money that was a TRD uh, off-road. Uh, and so I wouldn't have gotten these. But let's talk about payload, Andre, because it's not grand. No. So the Nissan was 1100. Then we had a couple great payload packages. But this one is only 1,200 pounds. So not super great. Not super great. And I think it's partially because they made the chassis heavier, right? The, the frame is now fully boxed. It's very, very strong. They extended the wheelbase uh, over the previous Tacoma. They still gave it the uh, composite bed. Yeah, let, let me see if it's dampened here. Oh, look at that, Andre. Ooh. Ooh, fancy, fancy. That's what you get for, the price of this truck is $45,300. So it's less than the Frontier, less than the Honda, but more than the Chevy. Uh, and then we, when we were doing the Ike with it recently, we actually were on the bump stops because we had like three big guys in the cab. Yes. Plus we were kind of maxing out the towing. So we, yeah, we had about 6,200 pound trailer and suspension compressed. All right, Andre, tell me about these guys. Well, this is a company that's made in the USA. I love that patent pending Charvonia design sent this to us. These are tie downs that fit in the rail of the bed 
and also on the floor. And you could, you know, it gives you a lot more options for tying down and they're very lightweight. I love that. Yeah, they're billet, right? Yep. Yeah, that's really nice. And I also love the fact this bed, once again, comes with this composite, uh, so you don't have to bedline it. Yeah, but my, my complaint when this is wet... It's very slippery. Very slick. So um, Toyota does offer a certain coating yeah. that you could put on, but once again, like a bed liner. Yeah, so, so then you got to bed line your composite. That's getting <laughs> absolutely... <laughs> but it's true. Hey, yeah. how about towing? How much is the tow? So 6,500 pounds. Yeah. So this is very similar to the... Wow, well, your your plug here is very... You know, I'm a you big, have a plug in the, your hitch. I'm a big fan of true leaks. Check word for plug. <laughs> There you go. Uh, 6,500 pounds. Very accessible though. Um, but the double wall design here on the side, which is not my favorite, but still. Um, and and I gotta good. do a quick shout out to Rider Justice, our friend uh, Scott O'Sullivan. If you guys are ever in an accident, your family or friends are in an accident, he is a great attorney here in Denver, but he does national work. So give him a call. Uh, he's not only you know a sponsor, he's become a friend of ours does a really great job let's go under the hood andre yeah and he also is an automotive enthusiast he and, owns a tacoma and he's, he's and he's a psych he rides too he's a and he, ri he, he rides motorcycles yeah. so so let's see if this is if there's a stick or no stick 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 ah, okay. stick oh this is such a messy it is it is very messy <laughs> you know for the longest time i kept complaining about the fact that manufacturers covered up the engine with this you know plastic cover now I kind of wish this had the plastic cover. I think I was wrong. I have to take that back because this just looks like like too much spaghetti. Well, when we look, were under the hood of the Nissan, the Honda, and the Chevy, they had like plastic covers, right? Yeah. Um, but not that there's anything wrong with it. I'm sure no. it's fine. Probably easier to work on. Just visually, it looks well, a little. Well, the idea is that you never open this, right? <laughs> Because it's a Toyota, yeah. you never see this, so I guess that's the idea. So we're back to a turbo. Um, yeah, it's a 2.4 liter, so it's the new engine. They actually introduced several versions of this engine in like a Highlander SUV and others, uh, but this is a truck version of it, a 278 horsepower and 317 pound-feet of torque, eight-speed automatic. They do offer a six-speed manual, so you can have that as an option, and there is also a work truck version of this engine just like in the chevy with a lower power output yeah and i've loved it i gotta tell you as somebody who lives at a mile above sea level i love turbos i know all you sea lander types uh, don't like turbos because you think that they first of all there's this i think there's a mis mystique out there or there's lore out there the turbos don't last right once upon a time back in the 70s when i was growing up in 80s turbos weren't grand they are, they had a lot of turbo lag uh, and they weren't designed with the engine in mind, so they had an engine, they stuck turbos on it. Oftentimes they would overheat and there would be issues. Not anymore. I don't think that you should worry about having a turbo. Lots of benefits, including the torque hits hard and it hits early. 1700 RPM, 1700. maximum torque. Yeah. It's almost like a diesel. Yeah. I mean, this might as well be a diesel. Doesn't, uh, doesn't necessarily, uh, you know, sound like a diesel. Actually, no. it does. It kind of does well, tickle a little bit, huh? Yeah. All right, let's show we get on the inside. Yeah, let's let's try this space. All right, I'll and they changed the cab. You know, they made the cab taller. And underneath here, there's a little bit of space. It's not bad. Manual seats, I see. Manual seats. No center armrest. So this is, uh, like I mentioned, forty-five thousand three hundred. Uh, okay, so uh, better headroom. Uh, nowhere near as good as the Ridgeline. Somewhat upright, not as horribly upright, but I don't think I have any vents here, Andre. Those aren't vents. I don't have any USB ports. I do have cup holders like the Colorado, mm -hmm. but it feels very uh, cost cutty. I'm going to give this a 2.5 on the comfort scale. Just a bit better. It's huh? a little bit better than your truck because yeah. I have more headroom, uh, but it's not not ideal. I, 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 like you said, maybe you're right. Like you said, if you have a family, get yourself a full size truck. Yeah, I would agree. And I think my next truck. Um, after the Colorado, I think my next truck will be a full size. So, so quick quiz, what's the downside to a full size truck that, that the midsize or a compact truck doesn't have? Well, it's garageability. Exactly, you knew that. <laughs> because my garage, I don't know, in Colorado, lots of homes have 19 foot long garages. I don't know who created that, why that was created, but I cannot fit a full size truck in my garage. Yeah, so a compact or midsize truck will fit in your garage, but a full size truck forget about it so i do like the control out i love the big bam 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 except for the volume now i don't know what the hell happened there 
Why, how, why do you how did these, it, yeah, like full gloves, right? And then, here, get, here, try it. See if you can even turn that volume knob with that. Give Wait that a, a shot. This how is like, like a, I just handed Andre a, a work glove. Oh, this is like a winter work glove. Yeah, sure. It's uh, it's a Carhartt. Ah, uh, barely, I right? Can't. Yeah. I don't know. You can also use the steering wheel control. I get that. Uh, and then I also don't like the fact that we're missing a lot of buttons. We do have a rear locker in this one. We do have a rear locker, but uh, that, that's it. And, yeah. and you can get a disconnectable sway bar, which is unusual uh, for the midsize truck segment. But it's not in this truck. But it's, it's, a, this it's, truck. A, it's an option. Um, so the, the Chevy... Whoa, whoa. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the Colorado does have a G80, which is kind of a mechanical system, a rear differential locker system. This is actually selectable. Um, and like we said, Frontier has an option for this as well. And we have manual two high, four high, and four low. It's up here. It's up here. And then we have, do have different drive modes, just like the Colorado. Yeah. Um, but no automatic mode, unless you get a Tacoma with a limited trim. Yeah. Right? And that has the a different... The fancy schmancy on-road truck. Yeah. Which is ironic because, look, the problem, here's the problem, guys. When we found this, if you are in conditions that are varying, so let's say there's snow and then... It's starting to dry up and then there's, you know, wet pavement and there's dry pavement. This truck in four high will crab uh, and it's, you know, it's not comfortable and it's hard to park. Mm -hmm. And so I find myself always having to switch in variable conditions from four high uh, to two high to four yeah. high. And it just gets to be a pain in the butt. And my wife, in fact, hates it so much that she won't get a car that isn't all wheel drive all the time. So I know trucks have been that way for a long time, but I think it would be a competitive advantage for like the Passport to actually create a four high all the time that doesn't crab. Exactly. And that's why I like my Colorado because that's an option for me. Yeah. So that's why I well, love that. Well, there's an option, once again, there, no, offers at, that, the, at the lower price. At the, yeah, I don't you, have to buy a fancy Tacoma yeah. to, to get that feature. And some of the people have said, and I think this is basically true, that there's, you know, this is kind of a sea of gray and black. It does you feel a get, little bit industrial in yeah, some areas yeah, here. And, and some of the parts are a little plasticky. Uh, and people say that, especially when you're talking about a $45,000 truck, which is what this costs. Exactly. But I do like the digital control. It's a little finicky when you're switching, uh, you know, for the different functions. So we do we, have telescoping, though. Yeah, we The do. Chevy did not, and Nissan did not. Hey, go, go right on the thing and see what kind of fuel economy we're getting. You know what? I, I, I don't like this digital design because it's not super intuitive. But I finally figured it out. Yeah, it's not super intuitive. It's finicky. Pitch and roll. Yeah, we'll get to oil temps. Yeah. And here you go. Eighteen point two. Ooh, I'm way off from the. No, but remember, we were, we drag were just racing. drag racing, racing and yeah. towing. Yeah, that's true. So it's, um, it's gonna go. No, no, you're you're on the money because yeah. remember, in our trip, we got twenty four. Yeah. yeah. Uh, MPG. So the efficiency is better. Oh, the other thing I hate about, it, uh, show them, uh, Cole, show them the fuel gauge. It's got one of those like classic 80s or 70s style fuel gauges where you fill it up and then for the first half the tank it's full and then the last half tank just drops like a rocket. It's not a linear gauge. No, it's not. No, it's just it's, it's just really like weird. it's in the mood. Yeah, I don't know what 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 you know what sensor is reading the fuel uh, level, but it's not great. Oh, you want to vroom it? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go get my. All right, go ahead. Go vrooming. Go for it. Interesting. So that was about 4,000 RPM. It has kind of a unique sound, but not super pleasing, right? Well, industrial. All right, and let's get to the last truck here, and that is the newest truck. You just came back from Utah where yep. you were driving this on the uh, program. Uh, and uh, I, think, I think I don't like the styling, Andre. It's too, uh, it's too sedate. So this truck, the new Ranger, was first introduced in Australia, right? Yeah. It was in a lot of ways designed in Australia as a ute. Uh, yeah, so they also have a SUV in other markets yeah. like Europe and Australia where the Everest, yeah. which has a very similar front end. It's, and, and I agree with you, I, I'm not a huge fan because it looks like an SUV. Yeah, it's too roly-poly. Right? It doesn't look, it's got the same problem the Ridgeline has now. It's too, it's the only unchecky. positive thing here, this is an FX4, mm -hmm. and as far as the uh, style, and it has a different like silver plate here, and also a skid plate underneath, and that kind of breaks up the design. But when you see it all body color, it almost looks like a just a standard SUV. Yeah, I agree. 
uh, from the front, uh, this could be the Everest. It could be. And that's not, that's not, a, that's not a compliment. Having said that, I love the color. Uh, do you like the new Ford badge? It's huge. Yeah. They're so increasing. Ford kind of redesigned it. <laughs> the size of it. Is it blue bluer maybe? I don't know. Maybe. Well, um, I think their new style badge, they're debuting on the F-150, yeah. which has got white oh, font. Okay. Yeah. The white font one is a F-150 now style. This is still a slightly large, um, older design, but it's also humongous. The good thing I'll say about it is no chrome. I'm really hating chrome. Yeah. I, I want to start like a movement, get rid of all chrome. It's <laughs> horrible for the environment. It's a pain in the ass after it starts to peel off. So let's not even go there. Um, let's talk about the tires and wheels. And, and also the chassis, right? Yeah. So so the, the Ranger came back to our market in 2019. And this is redesigned. This is now a little bit longer wheelbase by two inches. This is an FX4. It's got this beefy General Grabber AT all-terrain tire. It's called it AT Sport. And this is not as big as the Colorado. So once again, the Colorado out of these five has the largest diameter tire. But this is okay. Um, I, I took, I drove 500 miles from Utah back to Denver here. And, you know, these tires were great in the snow. I drove in the snow, in the wet, on ice, uh, on my road trip. And these tires do great. And we did get the XLT, which is kind of the mid-grade. So it's kind of the most popular in a lot of ways. Yeah, and this is a loan from Ford. Yeah. So this does not belong to us. All right, let's look at the back. Let's see, let's see what the bed's like. Oh, Once again, the five-footer. Five footer, it's got the little fold out. Um, extra. Extender. Extender, yeah. So this was an option. I think it's like 200 bucks or something like that to get this bed extender. And you can get that in the other trucks as well, of course. Um, once again, bed lined from the factory. And you got a lot of power outlets. I do. Yeah. So do two. I have two? You have two. You have dual. So I have a 12 volt yeah. and I have a 400 watt, uh, but still not super high wattage. Uh, on the system. Let me see. Let me put this back. Let me see if it was dampened. All right. Try the one finger. Oh yeah, All right, one finger. It's, it's oh. very, it's very light. Can you feel that? No. There you go. One finger. And how about towing? How does this bad boy tow? So this is almost class leading. Uh, not quite, but 7,500 pounds. So this is basically up there with the GM trucks. Also, the Jeep Gladiator tows, or is rated to tow 7,700 pounds. Uh, but this hitch is very accessible, although the hoops are a little bit hidden underneath. Um, I really like this hitch design. And it's a pretty tall truck. I mean, we're both tall and... Uh, yeah, can you reach? I can reach. Hold on, let me open the tailgate. I can reach, but barely. Not great. Yeah, if I had to pull something out of the middle, it would be a no-go. My bag is in here, so my... My backpack is I in the back of I also want to say truck. it's the only one. So how much is this truck, Andre? Identical to the Nissan, which is 46,540. And I noticed, I think it's the only truck, and this is where you get a lot of Ford value with the rear window. Also, not only that. Does, does the Passport have a rear window? Uh, the Ridgeline, yes. The Ridgeline, sorry. But, but Ridgeline. stay right there. Yeah. It's got something even more special in the rear. Is it electric? Uh, yes. Tell me that it's electric. Hold up. Oh, I love that. Look at that. That is, that is really good. All right, let's see the back seat room. Uh, no, before we do the back seat room, we should do under the hood. I yeah, let, let's look under the hood. Yeah, so that's cool. And the Ridgeline's the only one that has, right? The rear window? Um, it's, an, it's an option, though. No. Is it? Uh, in some of the other trucks, you can get it optionally. Right. But none of them have the power in the midsize. So, I don't know, do you really need a rear glass? Yeah, I uh, do. Window? Yeah, there's nothing like, you know, a beautiful evening air experience where it's you know nice and briskly cool outside and you don't have to heat the truck too much so you open the back window and let them the cool air come in it's really nice yeah it's a nice time so this engine bay looks like a toyota engine bay yeah they got away so, from the cover as well so no cover sitting it, down pretty low yeah so this is a 2.3 liter um this is a, basically the same engine they've had before 270 horsepower and 310 pound feet of torque but this is a 10 speed so we had some nine speed automatics we had some eight speed automatics this is a 10 speed and there's a v6 coming so yeah. there's a 2.7 twin turbo eco boost coming in this truck with xlt and lariat packages there's also the raptor coming which is a three liter v6 twin turbo 
which has a heck of a lot of power, over 400 horsepower. So I want to say that Ford is the only one that gives you engine choices. All the others, you get one and you better but like one. It's like basically, you know, except the Toyota and Chevy yeah, yeah, give you yeah, a couple yeah. of different yeah, power right, choices, yeah, right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except okay. of actual engine choices. So, so one of the things I love about the fact that we're going to turbos now is that they become tunable. Yeah. So um, obviously, when you do that, you're probably messing with your warranty. But you know, we've seen it in or, the Ford F-150 where people are getting a lot more power out. And you could say, well, I could also do that with a supercharger on a Coyote, but tuning it is a little bit easier. <laughs> It doesn't is. involve necessarily anything mechanical. Yeah, because you can get a little bit more power. And even manufacturers themselves do that, right? Yeah. They offer packages for tuning. All right, let me show you the back here. Let's do the back seat test. So this is, I think, where the Ford really shines. There's a little tab in the front of the seat. Got it. Thank you, Andre. Yeah. Oh, not no. great. No. But there is another feature. Yeah. Hold on a second. Okay. Stay right there. I'm not going anywhere, Andre. If you lower this, yeah. If you lower this, yeah. Check this out, Cole. Can you get in here? Let this does see. that. Oh, look at that. So I'm struggling to see what that would be useful for. Maybe to put I, your dog in here so you don't I, get like fur everywhere. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but there is a tiny bit of storage. Sometimes there is a subwoofer back there as well. But I could see so. this like you you could protect this nice white cloth from getting dirty. And probably gives you a little bit, a couple more inches of space, at least from the back. So let me sit in the back here. Uh, uh, not bad. You know, I'm going to give this a four. So it's almost good. ridgeline. Almost ridgeline, but not as good. Um, what does distract is the fact that, once again, no vents. I do have a USB and USB-C. Mm -hmm. I do have a power outlet, which is actually a 400 AC 120 volt, 400 max. These things are good, but they power like laptops. You're not going to power a tree trimmer with that. Or, yeah, or yeah, many can, other things. Yeah, you can charge things up. But in, in general, uh, you know, I like the fact that I have this. So this is where it kind of Ford brings a lot of value, right? Cup holders there, cubby well, it's hole like, there. It's like big truck features in a smaller truck. Yeah, I, right? could, I could live in this thing for, you know, I could potentially do like a cross state, if not cross country trip back here. Okay. Because look, you've got these scallop uh, seats, so that, that does give you more legroom. Hop in the front, Cole, and let's show them the. Let's show them the front. Yep. This is a little weird. I, yeah, that at, is weird. At 46,000, I still have to do this. You know, the, the problem is when we went, here's, here's kind of the typical journalist whining and whinging, <laughs> right? When we went to the buttons, everybody was like, oh, what's wrong with a key? And now that I've gotten used to the button, I sit down, my key is buried inside my pocket, and then I forget because I go to push the button. And, and there's oh, nothing there. And I can't get my key out because I'm old and fat, and so now i got to get out of the truck, get the key out because it's lodged in my pocket. So I do miss the button. But you get a lot, um, and you get a big screen for your money in this truck. You want to show them the Yeah, but yeah. This, this doesn't have a price, but it does show you just a few things because this is kind of a uh, event vehicle. Um, we do have a 373 rear lock and differential. This is the large screen, the 12 um, inch infotainment screen. We've got uh, FX4 package, running boards. You know, these running boards I probably would take off. I would too, yeah. Because this truck is already small. I, I don't feel like they're necessary, at least for the FX4. Well, if you're Jill Simonillo, who is an automotive journalist who's, you know, on the short side, then you need them. Maybe, But yeah. for us, they become kind of redundant. Yeah, but I'm, I'm just thinking FX4 means off-roading, and if you hit the step off-road, that's a problem, right? So this is identically priced to the Frontier, to the dollar. Exactly. Wow. And I, I heard your comments. I, I read a lot of comments that said, it's weird that this mid-range XLT Ranger yeah. is 46. It is a little weird. But like you were saying, they're adding a lot of features. Oh, we got, the, know, wind, we got the window. Do, do we have heated seats? Yes. Do, we, we, do you have a heated steering wheel? We have a lot. Yeah, so, uh, so this is partially digital and partially not digital. So yeah. there's analog temperature controls, but also digital temperature controls. So there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of uh, redundancy there. So, I have adaptive cruise so, control. So you know we have that Mustang. Yes. That's got a horizontal screen. Yes. Why does this have a vertical screen? I'm kind of, I kind of feel like Ford pick a, pick an orientation and go with it. That's a good question. I have a built-in brake controller. That, once again, really nice. We were just doing a video on the Ram website. Yeah. That was a $295 option. Right. And I think um, the entire towing package, is the, they have two at Ford. One is about 400 bucks. 
Um, and then another one that includes the brake controller, which is more expensive. How, so, is, it, how is it for uh, the dashboard there? It's kind of half digital and half analog. It is. Because yeah. it's an XLT. I don't love it. I don't love, I don't love it. The center, you know what? Um, the center is digital, the outside is... You see the, the rev counter is a bar. Yeah. It's not a dial like I'm used to. Yeah, don't do that. Um, this has telescoping and tilting, so this is quite comfortable. How about, how about lumbar? Um, I do have lumbar. So actually, this front seat, I mean, I, I, I liked it on my trip. So. Right, here's a question. Cole, does the, is, is the passenger electric? Take a look. Or is it manual? It's electric. Wow. That's uh -huh. Uh -huh, that, that, uh -huh. that. So you do get a lot with... With this. Yeah, with this. Yeah. All right, let me do the vroom vroom. Let me go okay. outside. Right. Vroom vroom. Here we go. Okay, vroom vroom it, Andre. 2.3 liter. Go for it. No. It sounds like a car. It doesn't sound like a truck. It yeah, doesn't sound like a truck, my friend, from yeah, here. That's a good way of putting it. All right, well, we promised him one more, just quickly to show him what trucks used to be like. And before we get to the old Dodge, yeah. uh, we should let you know that we are well aware that there's a Ranger Raptor, that there's a TRD Pro. <laughs> there's a ZR2. There's a ZR2 or a Bison. Yeah. Um, but we're not looking at those because those are even more expensive. And if you do want to see a review of, let's say, uh, the... Ranger Raptor. We have we, one. We just published it, yeah, because yeah, Andre took a jumping. You took a jumping, my man. I did a little jump. Yeah, yeah. How much are those? 57-ish? So the Raptor, Ranger Raptor starts at 57. Doesn't have any many options, actually. So, oh, that's nice. So you get, so, you, kind of, you get everything. And of course, the ZR2 Bison is also around 60 grand. So those are more expensive. So what is this truck that we're looking at here? This is a 1998 Dodge Dakota RT. So it's a performance edition. It also has a 5.9 liter V8, Magnum V8. So let's look at the engine. But this one is, mod and this truck is modified. Yeah, somebody kind of boy raced this thing. Um, and whether you like it or not, it is what it is. We got sports seats in it, but the engine is really what is so unique about it. And Andre, you mm. know, we, we bought this, to do a video series on. Yes. And since that time, we decided not to do it. So if anybody out there wants this truck, uh, send us an email to ask a TFL truck and we will be happy to sell it to you. This is weird, sorry. This this little latch. How much do we pay for this, do you remember? I don't I, remember. It was like $9,000, I think, around there. $8,000, $9,000. But it's also very low miles. Yes. So it's like 88,000 miles, yes. but somebody did go to town. They did go I to think town. they went to a local parts store or, you know, eBay or something, and they really put a lot of different trim pieces on this. Well, this is definitely in the classic truck world now. Yeah. Once upon a time when mid-sized trucks, which were now kind of, I mean, look at this. A Maverick is about the same size. Yeah, so this is very small. This engine, when it was new, Stock form produced 250 horsepower, but very big torque, 345 pound feet of torque. When we show them the inside, somebody put sports seats in the truck. Can you unlock the door? I can. There's, it's on the it's on the door. Aha. Uh -huh. And the uh, and the theme continues. Yeah, it's all yellow. It's like bumblebee. Look at the inside here. You got uh, flames on the dashboard, Andre. And you got these very uh, tight seats. If you're our size, they're not very comfortable. No, uh, huge bolsters. But this is kind of an example of what used to be, right? Right now- Look at the you, size of this bed. It's huge. It's like six and a half, I think almost six and a half feet long. Eh. Um, so you used to be able to buy a two-door version of this, an extended cab, a crew cab version of this. But now the mid-size trucks are going to four doors basically almost all the time yes there's a king cab nissan but it's becoming more and more rare uh, to actually find a two-door truck like this yeah what am i missing here andre no do we need to open no, this no no this shouldn't no that that opens that this should open up on its i think or maybe we do maybe we, i have keys well, let's not open it. it there's a bed under there trust me <laughs> <laughs> it's too much work uh and if you want this I think what we paid for like nine, nine, ten thousand dollars 
Send us an email at ask a TFL truck. It's also ger a little German. Autobahn it's racing. Autobahn yeah. This racing. has never been to the Autobahn. Uh, let's see how many miles it has. I believe it's 88,000. You want? I'll do the vroom vroom. You want to get the yeah. sound? Yeah. All right. I can get. You're gonna make oh. me sit in this thing. Huh? Because it doesn't have cats or something. Is that why you have me do this? No, because. No, I'm giving you the easy job because okay. getting in here is. Okay. Uh, That is a uh, low mileage for a pick em up truck. Now, Roman, uh, that's a manly sound. That is a manly sound. Dual exhaust. Yeah. Somebody loved this, Andre. Well, they loved it. You turn your mic off because I almost did that. The, they loved it a little bit too much because they even covered the brakes with the yellow painted uh, plate. Yes. Of, uh, this is insane. All right. Well, uh, there you have it. Um, I think, I hope that gives you an idea of um, what to expect from the new trucks and how they compare to a classic truck. I don't even know how much this tow is, does it matter? Oh, actually, I looked this up. Yeah? Uh, in the spec sheet, it said 6,900 pounds. Dang! So it's basically the same as the new ones. Yeah, because of the big old V8, Yeah, right? big old V8 and the Body frame. frame. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's pretty great. I mean, I don't think I want to tow 6,900 pounds with this because it's so short and so small, but I guess it could do it. Well, that's pretty impressive. Uh, and guys, you know, we're doing all these truck comparisons of mid-sized trucks because they're all basically new-ish, if not completely new. Uh, and so, once again, where should they go, Andre? OldTFL.com, one place, uh, all of our channels. You can kind of see all the latest in one area right there. And thank you for spending this beautiful Colorado afternoon with us and uh, joining us for this side-by-side -side truck comparison. We shall see you guys next time. Ciao.